All right, next up, we have got some controversy in Ireland. You had a migrant that stabbed three children outside of a school. Turned out he was from Algeria, I believe. Yeah, it was Algeria. Uh, this guy was supposed to be deported over 20 years ago, and the government decided not to. Not only was he in the country illegally supposed to be deported 20 years ago, he was arrested earlier this year for illegal possession of a knife, and they just let him go. They didn't charge him with, it, with anything. They didn't deport him for being in the country illegally and committing a felony. They just let him go. Now, this has led to riots and looting throughout the country, which are just idiots taking advantage of a bad situation. But Ireland has found um, some hope from an unlikely hero. And that was Conor McGregor. Go ahead pull up his first tweet here his first tweet he goes ireland we are at war and then the second one connor's really sticking up he says isn't that something the absolute picture of weak and feeble the most divisive of all is the weak man one of the most horrific crimes this nation has ever seen has occurred we do not care anymore what you sad cases have got to say i wish i could say it in his accent in a war you are nothing we are not backing down we are only warming up there will be no backing down until real change is implemented for the safety of our nation. We are not losing any more of our women and children to sick and twisted people who should not even be in Ireland in the first place. Call it what you want. We don't care. May God help us all. Ireland for victory. So Conor McGregor went off, and he is now being investigated by the state police for hate speech. They're looking into pressing charges against him for complaining. So they won't solve the problem, but they will arrest the people complaining about the problem. But, like... You saw the video of, like, the one of the legislators in Ireland. Yes, like, we're going we to pull that up next. Yeah, yeah go ahead, pull the video up. Pull the video when up. When you think the... about it, all law, all legislation is about the restriction of freedom. That's exactly what we're doing here, is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. You will see throughout our Constitution, yes, you have rights, but they are restricted for the common good. Everything needs to be balanced. And if your views on other people's identities go to make their lives unsafe, insecure, and cause them such deep discomfort that they cannot live in peace, then I believe that it is our job as legislators to restrict those freedoms for the common good. Uh, Mia. For the uh, common good. Mia, do you have any thoughts on the United States government when it comes to the common good? Yeah, Mia, how do you feel about governments and the common good? I'm going to be honest, I don't even know what we're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> talking about right now. So. <laughs> the, the common good is a big lie. The common, well, the common good equals whatever they want. Right. So yeah. the common good, it yeah. can mean, it, it, there's, no def, there's no definition of the common good. You know, I mean, not not anymore. Not in 2023, at least. We not, had to round up the Japanese in World War II and for the common for the good. Common good. For the, the, that, the common good has been used to push every atrocity throughout human history. Literally, every atrocity. The Holocaust that allegedly happened. Um, slavery, Native American relocation, Japanese internment. Every atrocity that's Italian, happened. Italian for the common good. It's all been for the common good. There's it's for order, time. order, there and was. for the people that are in power maintaining power. Yeah, it's the common, the common good. good is for. It's for the common good. It, it, we're, we're just doing this for the common good. That that's all there is to it. Man. Was there Italian? I I have to look it up. I, yeah, I think because like during the time. I mean, that can actually be justified. Uh, because like they were so close to like German, German immigrants, Italian immigrants. Because you know when your country's at war back then, like Wait, you are. So there was a Ita Italian inter. Where the fuck is my reparations? I support reparations. It for wasn't. Internment. It wasn't as big because the West Coast had more Japanese presence oh. than the East Coast, so it wasn't as prevalent. Could but you I'd... imagine a camp full of Italians? How the loud food that would, would be, be amazing. The food though. would be great, but it, you could hear it for blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I get to see them walking here. And which I don't. I think it was mo <laughs> mostly like they had they had connections because like Joe DiMaggio, Italian, yeah, went to go fight in the war for America. Yeah, there were more Italians, powerful like... Italians than there were Japanese people. Who was the most powerful Japanese in the 1940s? I don't know. All the Hirohito. samurais were dead by then. That guy was in Japan. No, but like they just yeah. they took him off to camps. They got really good at baseball and the Italians, <laughs> not the Italians, the Japanese. Oh, the Japanese. Yeah, no, I read a book in high school about the well, Japanese. Imagine if they did an internment camp for Indians. This not me as kind of dots. Imagine how bad that would smell. Oh. That would be like a toxic waste. Like everyone would have to wear gas masks. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's the first legitimate racist thing I've ever think I've, I've ever heard you actually say. But I will say this: Just Google when I was a kid, outside the Taj Mahal. when I was a kid, my mom told me 
I remember being like six years old or five years old in my mom's 1980 Toyota Tracel. Yeah. And she said, Monty, Arabs don't shower. <laughs> they only shower when they get married and when they have sex. <laughs> That's a legit. I mean, like, I wish I had proof of that conversation. I said, Bye. really, mom? When they get married and have sex? She said, yeah. My dad they said think. that the French smell horrible because they don't shower and they just put on cologne to cover the smell. Well, they don't wear deodorant. This show has turned into a debate over which race is the stinkiest. I didn't say race. I it. didn't say race. I said French. Oh, nationality is nationality. the smell. I would say I would say they don't wear deodorant, and I can back my my grandmother was French before she died, and oh. and she stunk. She was French before she died, but she was German after she died. <laughs> That's, that was just the way you said it was funny. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. She died. She was French, and she stunk. She had hairy armpits too. That's that's a she French was she thing. had red hair, bright red armpit hair, dude. <laughs> legit, legit. All right. So anyway, so back to the, the the restricting freedom. So this is the law they're trying to put together. If they think you're guilty of hate speech, if they want to investigate you, you have to turn over your phone and your password, or you will face a year in prison. So if they think you tweeted something offensive, they think you said an offensive joke on your Facebook or your stand-up routine or anything, the Irish police will come to your home with a warrant, and if you don't turn your phone over, you go to jail for a year, no questions asked. That's See, that's why when people complain about free speech, dude, it's so important. I just read today, Spain, their socialist government, just banned people praying the rosary in public. You'll be arrested if you express your Christian or Catholic faith in Spain in public as of today. Yeah. So that's that the First Amendment is so important and I'm so sick and tired of these people taking it for granted. Like you guys don't realize that are so against free speech and problematic speech and all that shit. You would be the first ones on the chopping block. The first ones. The second power shifted hands. Anyway, sorry, do you guys want to say something? I, I went on a diet. So McGregor is for the, the, the McGregor's free... against the law. McGregor's against the, the, the free speech, the anti free speech law. McGregor wants to crack down on immigration, and they're accusing him of being racist for that. And uh... they want to shut him down on, on his quote unquote hate speech for that. I, we could see, because we just saw Javier Malay in Argentina. We saw the guy in the Netherlands. We saw Maloney in Italy. Um, Pierre Poliveri's getting a lot of right wingers are getting elected There's a during the big world. shift in, in Canada. Politics. Well, Germany Argentina's too. in South America, but I hear you. South America. But no, I, I know. But I'm just saying, it's like, there's big in your... And like, Poland is another one. Yeah. Yep. And it's so funny, because, like, the left here is like, well, Europe is doing all this stuff. Europe has been. They're not... They're done. Yeah, they've they've turned... Because I say, everything starts in Europe and comes to the United States. They're right. usually about 10 years more progressive than we are, and they usually stop doing it because they realize what a shitstorm they've created, and they have to pull back a little bit closer to the middle. And that's what you're saying. Sometimes, and a lot of the time, Europe overcorrects, as we've seen throughout history. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but so you're seeing Pierre Paul Avera in Canada. There's, I'm hearing rumors McGregor could make a legit run for prime minister in Ireland. He could throw his, his name into politics. Could that'd you imagine? That'd be wild. Could you imagine the debates? It's there a, wouldn't be a debate it's, because he would want to fight them. <laughs> it's just, McGregor throws the shit. Let's go. <laughs> I would be all for it. I, we played that video of Mark Wayne Mullen, the senator that yeah. was from Oklahoma that wanted to fight the guy. No, we need to be more like how we were back in like the early 1700s when we first started. Yeah. We were throwing down on that floor constantly. Well, that's my thing. If you believe so strongly about something, if you want to change my way of life so strongly, you should you should be willing to take a punch for it. That's all I'm saying. They, they were throwing hands for the Constitution. Yeah, exactly. Dude, they used to shoot each other. They challenged each other to duels back in the day. Andrew... Was it Jackson? Yeah, Tate. like 100, oh. 100 duels won. That's Mia's favorite president. Wow. Andrew Jackson. That is a crazy record, 101. Yeah, there was an assassination attempt on him. And, and the he guy, beat the guy with a cane. Yeah, he beat the guy with the cane because he missed. Or yeah. misfired. The gun misfired, and he beat the guy with the cane. Didn't, or no, that was Roosevelt that got shot. After, or not FDR, yeah, Teddy just, Roosevelt. Yeah. Got shot and then finished the speech. Yeah. So they don't make presidents like that. Could no. you imagine Biden? Dude, Biden would have to leave the stage if you coughed on him. There's no, there's no way that, Biden could do that. That's that joke that Gillis has. Where he's the one you could punch assassinate. Yeah, he's the only president you could assassinate by punching. 
<laughs> hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click the link in the description to get the full episode on Rumble. If you prefer to listen along, you could actually get us on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. You can also go to www.outlawstreamers.com to learn more about not just my show, but tons of other great shows and all the exciting projects they have coming up. Follow my socials at Caleb Isn't Funny on Twitter and Instagram, at Caleb Salvatore Comedy on the Chinese spy app that is TikTok, and be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks, and we'll see you every Saturday for brand new episodes of That's Based. Peace.